never been to Serbia or any of these Balkan countries. And it was supposed to be one of my best trips. Modern aviaries and heartwarming people shaped my journey. I have to appreciate being with Igor. True friendship were formed here. There they can fly around. We learned more about the topic of pellet feeding and exchanged valuable experiences together. Many um, emotions. See ya! See ya! Zivili! Zivili! Training? Nice birds, perfect. Let's go on a trip to Serbia, the hidden gem of bird breeding. Part 1 Now I'm nearly there, totally excited, never been to Serbia or any of these Balkan countries. Um, it's quite different, but it's exciting, it's rural, rustic, easy peasy. And I like that. Uh, completely different um, from the rest of the world. But this doesn't matter. We meet parrot people. And parrot people are always the same crazy. And doesn't matter where you meet someone loving parrots, you should get along. That's the place where I should be, somewhere on the end of the road. Let's see. It looks pretty green. And there should be some parrots. So, uh, I just arrived, but I'm not sure if I'm right now. I hear some macaws somewhere. Absolutely don't know where I should go now. Here's a chicken farm. I know that he owns a chicken farm. You have to film us! <laughs> the first moment! Yes? Ciao. Oh. Yes, yes. Let's go inside. I finally got him. Good morning, guys. I know I just disappeared yesterday, but we have been in talks, and you know how when breeders meet, they love to talk over hours. So. I've got a great room. Just look at this view. Even a little bit colder wind. Yeah. I could have sleep maybe one, two hour more. <laughs> it's, every, it's everything like Panama. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I promise you, after my long break, we will visit another nice breeder. And I'm really happy to present you a magnificent place full of macaws, cockatoos, Amazons. We have pionos here. We have some parakeets here. And in general, this breeder has about 200 birds, about 80 to 100 aviaries, which is amazing in a wonderful surrounding of lovely tropical plants. Now let's go closer to it and see the whole aviary complex in detail. Maybe just briefly a story how I met Igor. I met Igor last year on the island of Tenerife in Spain. And it was, I saw him just on the street. I knew him from Facebook and I said, Igor, and he said, France. And we saw each other and I don't know, this is how it started to be a real friendship. So one year has passed now 
and I already said last year I will visit this guy in Serbia. Now I'm here directly in it. Yesterday I had a lovely drive. It was a bit tiring, the borders were blocked, but finally I'm here, sunshine coming out again now. What a sign. We went yesterday through all the aviaries here and it was just stunning to see the the Australian cockatoos, the Corellas, the Major Mitchell cockatoo, the, the Moluccan cockatoos and all the rows of the macaws. And we will discover this today. We will see the diet, feeding, we will try the pellets, we will see how it's everything cleaned, we will see the aviary complexes because you guys are always interested how breeders have their different setup of inside aviary and outside aviary. We also will see different kinds of nest boxes, how we control it, how it's the best done, not disturbing the parrots and much more. There will be also some ducks in the end of the video. So stay on the video and enjoy some nice parrot stuff. Check out our natural vital pellets herbal blend full of dandelion, nettle, celery and co. A nutritious and wholesome alternative. Keeping macaws can be very challenging. They need long flights, long aviaries, they are pretty loud and they expect a lot of foraging things to do in their aviaries. Igor keeps amazing pairs of green winged macaws, of the blue and gold macaws, of the Arambigua, Macau and so on. It's crazy. And he wants to build even more. He's not finished yet. There will be aviaries on the other side. And he told me about his plans. He wants from every species at least 10 to 20 pairs. Can you imagine? That's simply a dream for a lot of people. And I'm happy being here and presenting you his amazing aviary complex. This is the aviary for young parrots. They can enjoy here being outside the whole day long during the summer, of course. Here they have a shelter to hide, which is pretty nice, covered by three sides. And there they can fly around, interact with each other. There's also some cockatoo in there and just enjoying to be a parrot when they are young. We have here Ara Militaris again, we have here some small cockatoos, we have also green winged macaws living together in a nice harmony and spending time in the rain, foraging on the ground. Igor likes also to have natural ground in his aviaries where everything is growing. Birds can go down, forage, pulling out the roots, 
getting some flowers in the summer. He also is planting kumquats here, oranges and also melons and citrons, lemons and birds just enjoy it. You just can pick it here, put it into the birds and they are happy. Try our vital pellets now. We have a very simple recipe with over seven types of fruits and berries, four vegetable types and a lot of healthy probiotic bacteria. No chemical preservatives, no added sugar, no synthetic colors and no artificial antioxidants. Check out our products. Amazon parrots are probably one of the most well-known residents of aviaries. Igor holds over 10 species of them, including the large and increasingly rare mealy Amazons. In this older aviary complex, Igor is keeping different Amazons. Different species living beside each other with double wire mesh so that they of course can't bite off their nails or their feet, tips of the feet. This aviary complex seems like a bit old but it's the same principle as the new ones. It's just the wires a bit older or the, the part, the, the, um, the iron elements, right? The steel elements. But this doesn't matter if it's a little bit rusty or looking old. To be honest, sometimes an older aviary style has more character than newly very shiny built aluminium elements. This yellow-shouldered Amazon, Amazona barbadensis, is very excited and for good reason. This pair has successfully had chicks in its nest box that we are about to admire very soon. The Cuban Amazon have been my first Amazons in my aviaries. And also the double yellow-headed Amazons are spectacular in Igor's collection. So guys, currently we are in the feeding kitchen. Igo is now preparing his food for more than 100 parrots. It's wise to change to pellets. Why? The many more breeders seeing the advantages of feeding pellets. You do not have to prepare all these fruits and vegetables anymore. Because all these fruits and vegetables are already inside the pellets. So you save time for food preparation as Igor is spending a lot of time every day to cut the fruits, to keep them fresh. Also the advantage of feeding pellets is that you don't have any mold, right? You don't have any bacteria on it. You don't have any pesticides on it. And this makes it very simple to feed pellets in big breeding stations, but also for your parrot alone at home. On the outside of the oranges there's a lot of waxes and pesticides which you just don't need to feed, right? And if you feed the pellets, it's very simple because the pellets already include all vegetables. We have four types of vegetables, we have seven types of fruits and four types of berries inside. So this is massive fruit and vegetable content just in a little pellet. More than 10% to be honest. every day cutting fruits and vegetables, mixing the food together and he decided also to try out some pellets because 
Many breeders already have big breeding facilities with more than 100 parrots, even 20 parrots, even two parrots at home. It makes it simply easier and more effective to feed. Why? Because we have all the supplements, the vitamins, minerals, spirulina, is everything inside. We have a high fruit and vegetable content of more than 10%. So all the fruits you see up here, apples, carrots, is all already inside our pellets. And this on a natural base, without preservatives, without added sugars, without artificial antioxidants, and many more. And these effective pellets can be fed the whole year through. There is our maintenance pellets and include enough calcium, enough protein the whole year through to all so breed. The birds, they don't need to have a stimulation again when they get the whole year fed by pellets. That's simply wrong because the birds receive a certain amount of protein daily. It means if you feed to the breeding diet another certain amount of protein, it's just too much. So the body is already running really on high temperature the whole year through. And then you want to put even more gas on the, on the, on the pedal, right, in the birds bird thinking and it simply doesn't have this energy anymore. So the maintenance pellets we supply with your carrot, fruit and vegetable blend and herbal pen blend is exactly enough for covering the whole years, covering all seasons because your birds receive daily already the vitamins and minerals they need to stay healthy and to breed a lot of youngsters. Do you need some egg? So now it's time, the golden hour. We feed the first time the pellets to his whole flock. And very exciting always when you introduce new food to your whole flock. But it makes sense. You save time, you save in the end money. And you save a lot of waste. We are now in the inside aviary of... White. Okay, we are in the inside aviaries of one of his macaw house. There's another one and the cockatoos. They're getting extremely hungry right now and we will see how they accept the pellets. For them, it is the first time. So we saw that the first pair of Mar Ara Macau and Ararauna already ate the pellets straight away. Of course the birds are very interested when you introduce them to pellets, but you have to be very consequent. Keep it on feeding pellets because the birds know you have also seeds available and they will be very hard. They are like little kids if you introduce some broccoli or something. Of course your kids do not want to eat broccoli now, but if you keep doing and telling them how great it is... <laughs> they didn't like that.
You thought that was all? No, Victor. Vic why I say always Victor? Igor. <laughs> I say always Victor. I don't know why. Well, you thought that was everything? No. He has cockatoos more. There's another pair of macaws. Now let's go in the other wheel. Uh, I'm totally. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy bird. Max. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Igor loves <laughs> looking salmon crested cockatoos. This is, is is it your favorite bird? Yes. On the Macau also, huh? Yes. And these ones are really friendly. <laughs> Oh, you, oh you, you like them? You like the pellets? Yes? They wait to eat now the pellets. Very tame. You can get them out. Come on. This inside aviary is pretty unusual to me. Why? Because you have only entrance and feeding plates down here. I've never seen that before, but it's, you always keep learning. People have built these aviaries not completely new. They reuse these buildings. Probably was a pig farm before or something for chicken because he's very much into chicken. So it looks like there are no parrots, but on each side there's lots of cockatoos here. Let's see closer in this aviary complex and how it works. This is the bike, bike, yes. Female. Yep. So currently Igor and his wife preparing the food, yeah, the fresh food for the parrots, which takes around 45-50 minutes each day and also to feed it, to put it in the bowls, to get it out in the aviary complex, needs about one to two hours, depending what you're feeding on the day. If you feed fresh food, if you have some leafy greens on or putting some fresh branches, it, it can vary from one to two hours plus preparation, so about maximum two and a half, three hours maximum. If you feed pellets, you do not have any preparation time. It saves a lot of time. Means he can invest this time into watching the birds closely, making more breeding statistics. So looking deeper into their behavior, he can spend easily one and a half hour, he's saving one and a half hour 
watching the birds, making new constructions, working on feeding statistics. And this time, this valuable time which you save is very important. Besides this, of course, you save a lot of time when cleaning. We didn't have the cleaning aspect which you do regularly, once a week. With the seeds on the ground, you attract a lot of rodents. With the feed rest on the ground for fruits and vegetables, you attract a lot of some bees and other insects. And if you have simply the pellets in the, in the bowl, there's everything already included. Means you do not attract any mice, any rodents, you do not attract any insects because insects love sugary fruits and the bees attracted which can harm the bird once they get stung. Plus you save the time because on the ground there's only some dust, right? We are now inside the incubation room. Means here we have chicks for hand rearing purposes. Mainly now Eclectus parrots because he was pretty successful in breeding Eclectus parrots. By the way, the Eclectus they love our fruit and vegetable blend because the high content of fruits inside and in the berries, for example, inside our vital pellet blend attracts these birds and mimic their habitat diet because Eclectus eat a lot of fruits and berries the whole day on in the northern part of Australia and the Asian islands. And what I'm really happy about, this breeder keeps several pairs of Corellas. So the little Corella from Australia is one of my favorite cockatoo. It got really forgotten in aviculture. It's not so great looking as other cockatoos with a big crest. His small thick crest is maybe not so attracting to many people, but these birds are endless clever and I'm happy that I see some pairs remaining here because this species gets slowly and slowly out of aviaries. I don't know why. The diet of cockatoos varies from species to species. Here we have the corellas, the galas, we have the long-billed corellas or the western corellas, which need a low-fat diet. These birds are the whole day foraging for food. This little guy here over here, this little <laughs> gala, they like to go on the ground a lot. They like to dig in the ground. They like to pick some seeds and some roots on the ground. So structure your aviary like this, that these birds have the opportunity going down, foraging nice and feel in their, and mimic their habitat. As I always say, the surrounding of the aviary is also very important. We have some bamboo here, tropical plants, European trees, and especially the nice Molucca cockatoos, they love a green surrounding. So it has to be green inside the aviary a bit from time to time to exchange new branches, but also outside the aviary. Birds 
The law of a complete surrounding of both. I have to appreciate being with Igor two days now in Serbia. Thank you very much, Igor. It was a pleasure meeting him. He is a parrot god. He knows everything about parrots. Look at his aviaries. Very proud man. Igor, thank you very much, my friend.